Hey everyone, Ben here. Just a little follow-up to the last tutorial uh, we did on randomizing color. This is where I ended up. We had a little bit of a speed modeling take place and uh, not a super exciting one. I just made a stack of cubes that were individual objects and I have my random number generator applied to both my hue or to my hue saturation and value, all three of them. And as we change the variance, say, of the uh, input on the saturation, we can see things changing or the variance of the values that changes. Same thing with the hues. We can get lots of interesting results over here. Um, so we've got these three inputs. Now the question is, it's definitely cleaner because we're able to take this whole mess that's inside our group and uh, just keep it hidden, tucked out of the way, and we just have these three inputs. Uh, but let's think about this for a minute. The seed, do, do we really need to change the seed? Well, we set it once, it's probably okay. One, two, three, four, five. The seed-ish, as I'm calling it. The variance, uh, we do adjust, but the midpoints, we really don't change. Uh, we need to uh, change the one for each input, but once they're set, they really don't have to do anything. So we're gonna do one more thing here. We're gonna take all three of these and the hue saturation value node. We're gonna press control G again to group all four of these elements. So groups inside of groups. And now we're gonna do a similar thing to what we did in the previous tutorial. We're going to only input um, a few elements here though. We're gonna input the variance of our hue. Okay. And I'm gonna call this hue random. How does that sound? And I'm going to take our variance for our saturation. And I'll call this saturation random. And then I'm going to, wait a minute, sorry, wrong one. Hue random. Click this other one here. Saturation random. And uh, finally, take our variance for the value. Select it first, thank you. Value, hang on, here we go, value random. Now, if you want, you also have the option, uh, which I didn't do previously, but it's kind of a good idea, to uh, set a minimum and maximum value. Now, you can always surpass these values by punching them in manually, but if you're trying to slide along uh, you know, the little slider number thingamajig, um, it won't go further than the values you set in. So for hue, I'm going to set it to be 0 and 1. That pretty much represents the whole spectrum. So now as I roll back and forth with hue, it only lets me do 0 and 1. Okay, so if my random hue is zero, there's absolutely no randomness to it. For saturation, I kind of like the option of going a little oversaturated and also a little undersaturated. So I'm gonna set it to be minus one and two. Okay, that's what I'm gonna go with. And value, um, also I like to have a fair amount of leeway there. So I'm gonna do minus two, positive two, and I can always punch in bigger numbers. So that's just gonna help me uh, keep things in a reasonable range while I work with them. Uh, so yeah, so there we go. You can also set a default value, which is often a good idea. So my default for hue, really I like it to be quite small, like 0 0.05, saturation 0 0.1, and value 0.2. Those will be my default values when I create this. Okay, anything else I need to change? Well, I do not need to change my midpoint. My midpoint's gonna stay the same for hue saturation and value, so I don't need to input that. I can keep that just inside the group where no one sees it. What about the seed? So we said we don't need to necessarily change the seed, but sometimes we like to. So we're going to do this. Um, we're gonna let it input a single number and we're gonna multiply that number. Um, let's see, let's do a converter, math, bring it up here. We're gonna multiply by our seed-ish. So this will be one, two, three. And I'm gonna input this value, which we'll set to one for now. And I'm going to run that into yet another socket. And I'm going to call this seed-ish, as I've been calling it. And this number is going to plug into seed-ish. So right now, that's actually going to give us a value of 123. Shift, Control, D makes a copy while maintaining the inputs. I'm going to change this to 1234. And that's going to go into that guy there. And we'll just collapse these guys down. Um, finally, Shift, Control, D. One, two, three, four, five. And that's gonna go in there. Okay, so I'm still gonna get different seeds with each of these random groups, but I only have to do one input now. And so now I can change this seed and you'll see it changes all attributes, the hue, the saturation, and the value, and it's, it changes them independently. All right, so that's great. And finally, the last thing I wanna input here is the color itself. So I can attach the color to that. And there we go, I've got hue, saturation, value, seed, color. I think I wanna put color before seed, so I'm just gonna pop that little arrow up there. And then I have my 
random color. And now I have yet another node group with a bunch more sliders. Well, not a bunch more, but a, a more useful set of sliders. And we're going to set this, we're going to name this thing to be, um, let's do random color object in parentheses. All right, so I've created this group. Let's just take a look at it. I can set my hue random to 0 0.05, saturation to 0.2, and value to 0.2. Maybe we'll set our saturation to 0.1 one and turn our value up a bit like that our hue is probably too much 0 0.01 there we go and then i can just change my seed ish around to a tweak the randomness to change the randomness and then i can change the color hue saturation value right there so now i just have access to these various nodes i was using before i have access to all of them through this one single input the last step you might be interested in I'm going to save this color randomizer with tutorial 04.blend and I'm going to create control N, reload my startup file, and I'm going to press shift F1. And by pressing shift F1, I'm telling Blender I want to take a part of another blend file and bring it into my current blend file. So I just save this one here, color randomizer with tutorial 06. You can see I save lots of versions, just how I work. I'm pretty sure that's the one I want. Yeah, wait, let's see. Which one did I just barely save? Uh, today's the 26th of October. Not, yep, that's it. That one there. Four, number four. And then under uh, node tree, you can see I have a few different groups here. Basic volume shader. I have a tutorial on that texture slicer. I don't think I have a tutorial on that. Maybe I do. Uh, kind of. I have tutorials like it. But I have this one here called random color object in parentheses. This random number generator is actually inside of random color and it'll get automatically imported because it's a part of this random color object, a pen from library. Now nothing happens. I'm in my default setup, so I don't want to change much. I'm going to select my cube. I'm going to go into my node editor. And if I don't have a material applied, I'm going to tell it to use a material. So it's sitting there because that will allow me to press shift a group random color object in parentheses. Now, the trick here is that I have to click the letter F. By clicking the letter F, I'm creating a fake user. And by creating this fake user, I'm basically telling Blender, don't delete it. Anything that's not being used in a Blender file doesn't get saved, for the most part, when you close your Blender project file and then reopen it. It sort of strips out all the stuff you're not using. By creating a fake user, you're not exactly tricking, but you're telling Blender not to eliminate this one thing. So I've got this random color object. I can now delete it by pressing X. I can go back into the 3D view here, deselect that. I'm basically back exactly where I was, except I've added that fake user. I'm gonna press Control U, save startup file. Yes, click it. And now if I were to, you know, just do whatever I do to this, press Control N to start a new startup file. I'm just gonna duplicate that on the X, duplicate that on the X like we did in the very first, at the very beginning of the first tutorial. Let's shift Z that guy. And we are going to go into, let's select all of these. Um, I guess I don't have to. They probably have the same material applied. They do. Applied six times. I can press Shift A. I have group random color. And I will input random color into that. And now immediately I have everything set up. I don't have to do that crazy setup stuff that I did before because it is now um, saved with my default Blender project. So it makes it a very quick, easy to access thing. And you should do this. I, I mean, I think this is a good idea to do with any complicated node setup you might have that you use more than once. Uh, just save it to a group and then import that group into your default Blender file. Set it up as a fake user. Don't make any other changes to your project file and save that as your default startup. And it uh, save you a lot of time. So I hope this was useful and I hope you enjoy your random color object uh, group node. And uh, if you do anything really interesting with this, let me know because there's some cool stuff you can do. Happy blendering. Thanks for watching.